Hello, welcome to our presentation. We will be presenting our ultrasonic uh, sensor with the uh, temperature calibration and also the common filter. Uh, this project was by Alexander Trivenio. And I'm Eddie. We're going to be introduce our system soon. So, the ultrasonic sensor system can be used in various application and scenario. Uh, for example, in the picture of Mars rover Perseverance, it has a lot of sensor on it. And we believe that they also use ultrasonic sensor to detect the terrain on Mars and also sense the obstacles or the distance from um, the objects in order the rover can be drive safely on the Mars without humans are, um, being operating the vehicle. So part of the important thing to operate the ultrasonic sensor is that we have to calibrate it before it starts to take data because without a accurate readings of speed of sound, the sensor itself wouldn't output a um, accurate distance since the distance is calculated based on the speed of sound because it's like sending out ultrasonic um, waves. So it's really much related to the speed of sound. And furthermore, we're, we are, we're also applying the common filter, which, allow our, um, which allows our sensor to filter out environmental noises and also allows the system to predict future data points based on the previous data gathered. So our system setup is based on the Arduino platform. We have the HCSRO4 ultrasonic sensor, and we also have the DHT11 temperature and moisture, moisture sensor connected together. And they worked together for the sensor to get accurate data. So the temperature sensor works for calibrating stuff and the ultrasonic sensor is working for detecting, detecting the distance from ob objects. And the library we use for the DHT11 sensor is the DHT11.h library. And for our fil common filter algor algorithm, we use the simple common filter.h library for that data filter. So uh, the figure shown in the, on the slide is our schematic for the ultrasonic sensor and our temperature sensor, which is the uh, DHT11. Uh, as you can see, the ultrasonic sensor has two uh, circular uh, uh, outputs uh, or circular uh, dishes where one actually sends ultrasonic waves and the other receives. These are the echo and trigger pin, which are uh, designated to the uh, second and third pin uh, pins on the uh, Arduino. And the DHT sensor or DHT 11 sensor uh, has one signal uh, input, which is designated to the uh, fourth pin uh, on the Arduino. And as you can, uh, and from the schematic, we you can see that the uh, DHT11 uh, uh, sensor is a three-pin uh, sensor. Uh, from the previous figure, you saw it with a resistor. That was because it that, that DHT11 uh, sensor was a four-pin. And uh, for most, or since for for our uh, design, we used a three-pin DHT sensor. Which, which we only needed just uh, three wires to, to hook up to our Arduino. So in addition to our sig sig uh, schematic, I'd like to address more on how the ultrasonic sensor use actually works. So by connecting that to our Arduino, we're able to send out original wave using our transmitter. And when the wave hits the object, it's gonna be reflected back and then our receiver, which is the echo pin, will be receiving that wave um, signal from the object. And between the, the time between the transmitter send out wave and receiver 
receive receives the wave it's the time we're looking for and using that time together with the speed of sound we are able to get the distance from our objects and so that's why it is really um essential to maintain or like to have a really accurate speed speed of sound so that we always get get a more accurate distance of um, from our system to the object so i'm gonna i'm gonna talk more about how we calibrated our system and how we obtain a more um, accurate speed of sound value so the calibration method is based on the equation of speed of sound, which is square root gamma RT. And gamma is a ratio of the specific heat and R is the universal gas constant. And T average is the one we will be measuring before the system start to get distance data. So T average is averaging the 30 sample we took before we start our system, which is gathered from our temperature sensor. And our T average would just be the sum of those temperature sample divided by 30, since we take 30 simple samples, uh, simple data. So by calibrating the speed of sound, we can get a more accurate distance reading, um, more accurate distance reading regarding uh, subjected to different environment and different situation. So as you can see in the plot, we have two data, data set. One is calibrated and one is no, calibra no calibration. The no cal calibration uses the speed of sound at sea level based on the standard atmosphere, standard atmosphere sea of sound value at sea level. And our calibrated data uses the, um, the temperature which the temperature in our room, which is our testing environments. And that shows a higher temperature, which resulting in a higher speed of sound. So we have a higher distance reading in that data set. So this calibration can be applied when temperature keeps changing. For example, when aircraft is climbing from sea level to like a um, couple thousands of feet, which the temperature change a lot. And also when the car is driving from day to night, the temperature is also changing. So it's necessary to maintain the speed of sound value accurate to the environment. So uh, from the figure to the right, you can see is the raw data from the ultrasonic sensor with no filter. Uh, you can see how it fluctuates even at points where the object is not moving at certain distances. And we can, we, you can see that our, our sample rate is about uh, 20, uh, 20 data points per second. Uh, and uh, you can see that when that it, it really, there, there's a lot of noise when, when you're changing uh, the distance of the objects in relation to the ultrasonic sensor. And now when we're, when we apply the, the, uh, Carmen filter to the raw data, we actually chose three different Q values. Uh, these Q values are actually the uh, covariance of the noise measurements. Uh, and so we chose three specific Q values. Uh, we, we chose the, the lowest being uh, e to the, or one, one times e to the to negative five. Uh, and we chose uh, higher ones uh, up to e to the negative one uh, in order to have to compare them and how how much they filter the raw data of the ultrasonic sensor. As you can see from the graph to the right, that most of uh, the the lower the 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 lower the <laughs> uh, the lower that the q value goes. Uh, in the algorithm, the more that the raw data is filtered. And so with a change in the distance of the object, there's less response uh, to the filtered data. And so this is uh, this could be used in order to take away much of noise in, a, in an environment that, that where noise is more prevalent.
So I would like to talk more about our workload. And Alex did like he constructed the Arduino common filter program together with the calibration code and the temperature sample take before taken before the program starts. And he also runs the test to gather the distance data to MATLAB and finally plot it out together with different Q values so that we can compare like a different Q value to our algorithm and we can see how significant they are. And I did the most of the format of the slides and the contents. And I also do more research on the equations we're using and also um, like how the calibration method works and how the field, uh, the common filter equations are working together. And I think that's all for our project presentation. Thanks for your patience. And... Okay.